American Public Television presents the following program in high definition. Welcome you to my kitchen. Today we're making carne mechada, Puerto Rican pot roast with potatoes and white rice, followed by string beans with roasted garlic sauce. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All clad metal crafters. All clad is bonded construction. All clad is innovative design. All clad is professional equipment. All clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy micro bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo. Cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years. I love decorating my house with pictures of my family, even in the kitchen. Um, I have this picture over here is my husband, Jerry, and Eric, my big boy. And I have my little Davi over here and Skeets hiding in the corner and my little stinky Angela. <laughs> She's going to hate me for saying that. And over here, this picture was in Santo Domingo. We went for vacation one year, and she was almost two years old. Isn't she, like, she's cute as a button. Isn't she the sweetest thing? And this picture, now this picture, this is the original Big Papi. This is the man, Captain Ray, my father, Raymond Martinez. My father was a New York City fireman for 32 years. It's really funny, when Papi Mommy got married, my father couldn't boil water. But in the firehouse, one of the things that they do, aside from saving lives and being heroes, is they cook. Those guys know their way around a kitchen stove. And one of my dad's favorite things to eat is pot roast. Mommy used to make carne mechada, which is like the Puerto Rican version of pot roast. And Papi picked up how to make it. And it's something that he would make at the firehouse. And I'm going to show you how to make it today. The ham that we're going to use for the stuffing for the carne mechada, in the Spanish butcher, they call this cooking ham. And you buy it just like this in big, thick slices. But you can get your ham at the deli, even you use a, a ham steak. Anything like that is fine. I'm just going to take this little skin off of it. My father's fond of saying that he would pass over a lobster dinner for pot roast. He just loves pot roast. And of course, nobody can make his pot roast. I once tried to make pot roast for him, and he was like, eh, it's nice. Not fabulous, but nice. I don't know, Dad, I think my pot roast is just fine. And I love making it for him. I'm just gonna set this ham in here. You're asking yourself, what is she doing with the ham? I thought we were making pot roast. We are making pot roast. We're making Puerto Rican pot roast, carne mechada. And the way that we do this is we make slits in the meat. And we're going to make stuffing with that and fill the slits. So when we cut the meat, you're going to see beautiful pockets of olives and ham. And I'm telling you, it's absolutely fabulous. OK, so we got our ham. And I'm going to give this a little pulse here. It's OK if this little chunks. This is absolutely fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. I'm just going to leave about, mm, about a cup or so. Okay, so let's leave the ham there. I'm going to trim some of this fat away from the rump roast. We're going to use like a three and a half pound of rump roast. And when you do carne mechada, you cut it against the grain. Okay, so you see the fibers of the meat running along this way? I want to make sure you guys can see that, OK? So our slits need to be across that grain. So we're going to make slits 
here. I just want to make sure that I have enough wiggle room in there to actually fit the spoon in and push off the stuffing. I just want to work a little pocket in there. So I have some wonderful Serignola olives. I love these olives. I think they're just so meaty and wonderful. I'm going to coarsely chop these olives, nice big pieces. It doesn't have to be pretty. And we're going to add that to our ham. And then I have a little bit of recaito. Recaito is a puree of onion and garlic and some little ajicitos, we have them available. Cilantro and culantro, or if you can't find culantro, more cilantro. For more information, go to www.daisycooks.com. And let's mix this up. We don't have to salt it because you know the ham has a little salt in it. And we're gonna salt the outside of the meat, so we wanna be careful with that. Okay? Just push it right in. There you go, right into the pocket. All the way in. And leave yourself some room because the meat will shrink and then it'll squeeze some of the stuffing out. You can't cook in the kitchen without getting your hands dirty. You know, don't be afraid to do that. All right, we got some salt. My mother's watching this now and going, that's not a pretzel, Daisy, that's not a pretzel. I know, Ma. <laughs> and some pepper. Now that we have the pot roast all ready, we're going to step over here and I'm going to make some achote oil. Achote oil, these are annatto seeds. It's, they're these little red seeds that I like to use and you'll see me, I mean, this is something that I do all the time. I love to make achote oil. I use it for a gazillion and one things in the kitchen. I'm going to use olive oil. Achote imparts a lovely, 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 did I say lovely? Color to whatever you're cooking. In addition to beautiful color, it's got an absolutely great flavor. Subtle, a little nutty. You want to watch the amount of heat that you add to your achote oil so that you don't burn the seeds and then you have to start again from scratch. I'm going to give it like medium high heat until I see it start to sparkle or twinkle a little bit. And then I'll lower the heat until I achieve the color that I'm looking for. Okay, so while that's happening, I have some peppers here that I'm going to use for my sauce for the pot roast. Trim the ends, trim the ribs. Okay, and then we'll just make little slices. And my achote oil, as you can see, is ready. It's got beautiful, vibrant color. I like to call this the color of the sunset because it's, it's yellow and red. There's no way you're not gonna tell me that's not gorgeous. And we're gonna set the achote oil at medium heat. I'm going to brown the meat just very, very, very gently because I don't want to ruin the achote oil. Let's go. And we got a little sizzle going on. Let me just lower that so I can monitor it. You can see I just have a, a little color. I don't want anything really, really high. And we're just going to keep turning our pot roast until that comes up to speed. And then we can go to work and make our sauce. I have some pretty, pretty color on all but one side now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and finish browning that side and then we'll take the pot roast out. You know, I don't ever think that there was a time as long as I can remember that the fact that my father was a fireman wasn't a great source of immense pride for me. I'm gonna drain most of the oil off of this and we'll leave a little bit in. I remember in the first grade when I could barely speak English, we had a report to do on the person that we most admired. And I wrote about my father, the fireman, how he, I just thought he was like the biggest, the bravest, the strongest, the smartest, the most handsome. I still think that daddy. Okay, I'm just gonna lower the heat a little bit and we're gonna work those little brown bits at the bottom of the pan. My two sliced peppers, my two gorgeous, gorgeous bay leaves. I want them to bloom in there nice. So I have some tomato paste. Four tablespoons or so, you know. Dad, if you're watching, sometimes I use a little more tomato paste than you would use, but that's okay. It's your recipe, I'm giving you your props. 
But you know I can't leave well enough alone, Dad. I'm gonna stamp Daisy on here somewhere. And we wanna watch the bottom of the pot at this point because once you add the tomato paste, you don't want to burn it. And it, you know, it can easily scorch the bottom of the pot. So we're moving around to cook it out. And I wanna add my ham. That smells good. And I'm gonna add a little can of generic tomato sauce. Actually, this is Spanish style sauce, but if you can't find this, although it really is readily available in most supermarkets, you know, you can use your own little can of tomato sauce, whatever that is. And it seems like I need to make the distinction, not pasta sauce, just tomato sauce. Little can of tomato sauce. Ooh, that smells absolutely delicious. Mmm. I am not having a problem with this at all. Okay, and I'm going to add beef broth. And I'm just going to stir this in. Let me just work this in here. I love what this is doing. Hmm. Salt, and I'm going to add my rump roast back. And I'm gonna bring that to the boil. Let me just sprinkle a little vinegar in there. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I've got those wonderful olives in the stuffing and the sharpness of the vinegar is really gonna make the sauce happy. You know me, I like my food happy. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cover my pot roast. I've lowered the heat. I'm going to cover it and I'll be checking it every once in a while for about an hour and a half to two hours till it's nice and tender. This is gonna be good. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm sitting here. I feel five years old again. I used to do this all the time. My dad would put me up on the rig. Sometimes they would take me for a ride around the block. I'm here at Engine Company 216, Ladder Company 108, and what am I doing here? I'm here because my daddy was a fireman. I want you to meet some of these fabulous guys. You know what? I like to call them what my knights doing? in shiny Good dark armor. My Thank friend, you. Roy Broswell, one of those boys in black. I used to do this all the time. I used to come into the back where the guys have their, their helmets and stuff, and I would get to try them on, and um, every once in a while, Daddy would take me upstairs to the second floor, and we would, he would like hold me, and we'd come down the pole together, and I'm not going to ask you to do that <laughs> okay. today. All right. One of the really fun places in the firehouse is the kitchen. Yeah. I've a lot of stuff goes on there, right? The fireman's kitchen is a very magic place. How often do you guys cook? They generally cook twice a day for lunch and for dinner, but some houses, well, here, we have uh, breakfast also. We have eggs and bacon. This morning we had French toast. Oh, healthy Every house. <laughs> Every house is different. Right, right. Okay. How is it that you guys develop such an incredible bond, not only amongst yourselves, but for the families of the firemen as well? As soon as you come in the department, you're part of the brotherhood. Not an individual person becomes part of the department, but their whole family right. becomes part of the department. Mm -hmm. The Christmas parties that you have in the firehouse where all the children, yeah. even the widows and the children of firemen that have been lost in the line are welcome and Santa Claus comes sliding down the pole yeah. and there is presents for every child and the firemen cook. They they, they blow it yeah, out, right? Yeah. We generally start doing that the night before and they just start cooking. So by the time the families get here in the morning, you have trays and trays yeah, and trays. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And trays. It looked like And they, they, I've never been to a firehouse um, party where we've ever run out of food. No kidding. It's like Daisy's house, guys. <laughs> I think that it's really important that we need to remember that these guys do this every single day of their lives. When everybody's running out of the building, you're the ones that are running in. And we don't support them just on days and on times of trouble and tragedy. Our prayers, our love, and our support are due them each and every day. You go with your bad self. <laughs> So while the carne mechada is simmering, I'm going to prepare some garlic to roast it so we can use that for a nice sauce for our string beans. And roasting garlic is something that I, I always like to keep a couple of heads of garlic in my refrigerator. This way, if I need it in a pinch, a little clove, or you know, just adding it to a sauce, or even on a piece of bread with a little salt is absolutely fabulous. Okay, and once I teach you to do this, you're always gonna wanna have roasted garlic in your fridge as well. 
I'm just going to take like the really heavy paper off of it, the little onion skins that are all papery, and I'm going to just cut the tips off so the heads are exposed. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to drizzle a little olive oil over the garlic, about a tablespoon and a half or so. And then I'm going to just make a little pouch with the garlic, and then I'll take, just take the garlic packet and walk it over to the oven, just like that. I don't need a pan or anything. So we'll set the oven at 350 and leave the garlic heads in there for about an hour. What that's going to do is it's going to roast the garlic cloves to a nice, nutty, almost a, like a creamy beige to a light brown. It's wonderful. It's getting close. It's been about, oh, almost an hour and a half, and the meat looks absolutely gorgeous. One of the things I like to do when I cook meat like this is I like to let it rest. So I'm going to go ahead and take my rump roast out. How pretty is that? My sauce looks lovely. I'm going to go ahead and finish peeling my last potato. And then we're going to cook the potatoes right in the sauce. I love cooking potatoes like that because then the potato becomes so much more. You know, it grabs all the flavors from the sauce, and oh my, I love eating like that. I'm just cutting this potato into like little rounds on the bias. I'm just going to put them right in there. And because we're cooking potatoes in the sauce, you're definitely going to tweak your seasonings because potatoes drink salt. They love salt. When I was in college, I would meet my father at the firehouse to get a ride in with him. I mean, what girl doesn't find firemen incredibly sexy? I just think they're just amazing. And it was like really funny. There was some like really cute firemen at my father's firehouse. I never got a chance to date a fireman. They were all afraid of my dad. It's like, Captain Ray's daughter? No, that's not gonna happen. So I married a doctor instead. Daddy was, was happy, I think. <laughs> I, th I still think firemen are fabulous. Okay, so mm, mm, that is wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna cover that. It's on a medium flame, perfect. I'm thinking 20, 25 minutes for the potatoes. And that gives me enough time to come over here and make some arroz blanco some delicious white fluffy rice to pick up those delicious juices of the sauce. I'm gonna heat a little vegetable oil, and that's not olive oil, so I can hit it with some nice high heat. Okay, we're gonna add our rice, and I have a penchant for long grain rice, because that's the rice that I learned how to cook first. A little salt. Rice is a real intimidating thing to a lot of people because it's not a part of a repertoire. Usually rice is something that you get as a side when you get your entree, but rice is magnificent. Okay, here we go. You see how the rice is getting chalky? Right around there, that's telling me that the rice is ready. And I'm not using broth today, I'm using plain old water. And this heat is high, just like I tell you every single time we make rice. Two fingers of fluid above the level of the rice, and then we're gonna let that boil at high heat until the level of the fluid meets the level of the rice. We stir it, cover it, and forget about it for 20 minutes. I've taken my garlic out of the oven and I have set it here just to cool off a little bit so I don't burn my little paws. And I'm going to saute our string beans, okay? I got a little bit of heat under this pan and I'm going to drizzle some olive oil. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. <gasps> oh, I love olive oil. I really, really do. Let me just bring it up to speed. Okay, here we go. While that's happening, I'm going to see to this garlic. And uh, once you roast garlic, you will keep it in your refrigerator. Like I do, just squeeze it right out. Look at that. And we're just gonna use this garlic to make a little sauce for our string beans. You just squeeze, they, they come right out. It's so simple to do, and you could make a garlic butter for garlic bread, or just add a couple of cloves to a sauce that you're making. I'm always tempted to pop one of those in my mouth because that's how good the garlic is at this point. It's like you could just spread it on bread with a little salt. I'm good to go. 
It smells so good right about now. Wow, that garlic is hot. You know, you can slip on a pair of latex gloves, both for the heat and for the smell of the garlic, which really doesn't bother me. I find that roasted garlic has much less of an odor than raw garlic. I think roasted garlic has a fragrance. I like to think of it like that. But hey, that's just me. And now I'm going to run these. And I'm just going to add a little bit of chicken stock. OK, great. That's going to be perfect. Let me pay some attention to these beans now. I'm going to put the heat up a little higher, give them a quick stir. Salt, pepper. So let me just give these a little, little toss. I'm going to give them a little splash, maybe a couple of tablespoons of chicken stock to create some nice steam. I want to bring out that pretty bright green. And I'm just going to add roast garlic. Ah, oh, this is going to be amazing. And I'm looking at my clock, and I've got about three minutes left on the rice, which is perfect because I'm going to cover these beans for about that long, and everything is going to come together at the same time. Ding! Just like I promised you, everything is ready at the same time. First, my fabulous rice. Watch. Ah! Did I not promise you gorgeous, beautiful rice? There it is, loose, fluffy, and gorgeous. Wonderful. Was that not the easiest thing? And then I've got, watch this. What, I'm smelling these string beans are driving me crazy. Look at this. Beautiful. Look at this. Gorgeous. Put them right in here. Oh, does that smell insane. It is, it's like almost too good. You look forward to eating your vegetables when they smell like this. Okay, and I'm going to carve my pot roast. Okay. And there we go. I see ham and olives. Mm, my mouth is watering. The meat is so tender because we let it rest. And it's just cutting beautifully. And I've got a beautiful platter to set it on. And I'm going to pick up these pieces and just fan my carne mechada alongside here. Ah, uh, look at my potatoes. Mm. My mouth is working overtime. It is working overtime. The peppers, oh my goodness. This is so good, it's almost wrong, you know? Oh boy, just a little parsley to make it sparkle. Okay, and I have a plate. Are we ready? This is how I like to do it. I like to mash the potatoes up a little bit, just pick up a little bit of the sauce. Mmm. It's absolutely delicious. The meat is tender. The string beans are perfect. Mmm, so good. Well, I know the guys at the firehouse are missing my papi right about now. And to Captain Ray, papi, you taught me everything I know. Buen provecho. Daisy Cooks, Latin flavors that will rock your world is the full-color, hardcover companion cookbook to this series. To order, call 800-336-1917. Daisy's top 10 basics and over 200 of her detailed recipes are included in this 320-page book. The price is $29.95. You can order your copy of Daisy Cooks by calling the toll-free number or order online at her website, daisycooks.com. 
Hola, it's Daisy. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at daisycooks.com. Tell me what you think. Sign up for my newsletter and get recipes and tips in English and Spanish. It's all at daisycooks.com. Daisy Cooks is brought to you by... As Daisy says, eat great, feel great, look great. Marshalls, brand names for less. All clad metal crafters. All clad is bonded construction. All clad is innovative design. All clad is professional equipment. All clad is a state of mind. Brillo with Oxy Action. For tough messes, Oxy micro bubbles lift and dissolve grease and grime. Brillo, cleaning solutions for your home for over 90 years.